I understand you have a background in engineering and also in some science as well. And I guess what that kind of, it kind of poses the question, everything that you're doing right now, I, I feel like at times your analytical mind would be challenged by some of the metaphysical processes that you're, you know, you're, you're working with and, and, and helping people out with. It's always an interesting question. And sometimes I ask, I ask that same question myself. Um, it's actually been a interesting balancing act that hasn't really been in conflict. I find it really interesting. Yeah, my background's engineering uh, degree in metallurgical engineering, the study of metals and so on uh, from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, worked in the nuclear power industry. Um, but that didn't really last real long. And how I got into all this engineering and science, though, was from a sixth grade teacher. Um, and that was the first male teacher I had and the first male that I could really identify with. I never I had a hard time with my father. Let's put it that way. Okay. And coming out, coming out of World War II, uh, where he was in the European theater. And my, you know, my parents got married and, and then they had me and then my brothers four years later. Um, but he was always fairly remote, but the sixth grade teacher, Mr. Switkin really turned me on to science and math. And, and I really identified with him. I felt like I could talk to him and communicate with him. So that got me interested in science and that went through all through high school and then obviously college and graduate school and business and working in the nuclear industry. However, interestingly, when I was 11 years old, growing up outside of Chicago, I had an epiphany. And I had no religious background whatsoever. My parents could care less about religion, organized religion, uh, never went to church, never read the Bible, never went to Sunday school. I'm walking back from baseball practice, and all of a sudden I hear this voice say, God does not live inside, outside of you. God lives within you. You are God. Whoa. Hmm. 11 years of age. Where did that come from? Okay. The funny thing was I wasn't freaked out by it. I said, oh, Okay. And then it said, God is not a male figure with a long white beard, a long white robe casting hell damnation of thunderbolts. You know, it was like a second, whoa, what's this all about? Again, I wasn't really freaked out by it. I went home, told my parents, and all they could say was, oh, this kid's weird. And that was about it. That was <laughs> So I had no context to hold that in. So it was like my higher self was telling me at age 11, kind of prepping me for this whole notion of, you know, God does not live outside of you. There is not a God or in heaven and things like that, but you are God. You're a part of God. I call it a Godlet that we're all part of, uh, we're all part of God. We're all from whatever you want to call God is. So okay. I had my first experience at 11, um, but also got involved in more of the left brain side with science and engineering uh, through college. And I didn't really get involved in the more spiritual side until my thirties. However, I did realize uh, after a couple of years in the nuclear power industry, that wasn't my calling. And uh, I went in all, all odd things. I went into the Peace Corps. And uh, much of the chagrin of my parents and uncle who didn't talk to me for years because he was so angry <laughs> that I would give up my degrees uh, to go to the Peace Corps. Right. And I was in Botswana, Africa, and I loved it. It was a great experience being with a whole different culture. Um, whole different way of thinking, you know, being, it was a brand new country, Botswana is right above South Africa. And when I was there, it was a fairly new country that had its own president, had a parliament kind of combination of the British Commonwealth and the American system. And they were run by chiefs and the chiefs ran the show. So that was a real eye opener for me. Hmm. Um, came back, got involved in politics, stayed in Washington, DC, and uh, worked in the Congress, in the Senate and a subcommittee. Uh, for a good while, eventually became a lobbyist in the area of education and computers and reading and things like that. Uh, formed a lobbying company, eventually ran a food nutrition nonprofit. So that was the one side of me. And, but in this, at the same time, uh, I was also deeply involved in the more spiritual side. Back starting in the 80s with the S training, Werner Erhard, if people want to remember who he was, he was like the big self-help guru at the time, uh, sold S-Training in 1986 to his employees. It became uh, the Forum, Landmark Education. Right. Uh, did work with that. And just, you know, as, you know, as I say, as you uh, 
are ready, the teacher shows up. You know, so I had different teachers show up in the different realms. I worked with a woman out of San Diego who was called a walk-in. If you ever heard of the term walk-in, walk-in are individuals who decide that it's time to leave their body and go back into spirit, but they leave their bodies intact. They don't pass on. And another soul enters the body. And there are a number of people around the world who are called walk-ins. And so I met this woman named Ayanda. Uh, and that was my first experience of a walk-in. And I actually saw a video uh, when the woman who decided to go into spirit um, and she was surrounded by her friends and it was all videotaped. And you could see like this white flash of light emanate from her crown chakra. She slumped over. And then there was another light that came back in and the body reanimated. Oh, wow. So it shows you that you know, we're, you might say, a lump of meat until we're animated by soul. And whenever that occurs, you know, there's a lot of different ideas about when does a soul enter the fetus? You know, right. is it at conception? Is it right before birth? Is it during the nine months? You know, it's all up to conjecture. There's no definite answer about that. But anyway, I saw, you know, in a way through a video of this woman, in a way, being reborn as another person, another woman with a different soul. And she also opened me up to channeling. Uh, it was the first time I saw or experienced channeling. She was channeling a Native American energy. Had never seen that before. That was in the early 90s. Uh, worked with her for a while. And then uh, I started working with what's called flower essences. You know, okay. I've heard of Bach Remedies. Yes. Dr. Bach, who created the uh, whole flower essence industry back in the 1930s in Germany. And that was with Paralandra essences. Um, Michelle Small Wright has a big farm outside of Warrington, Virginia, where she creates her essences, uh, Paralandra essences. Met with her, worked with those essences for a good while. Uh, did a lot of transformational breath work and okay. taught breath work, did work with groups and so on. And then in the early 2000s, I met up with a woman named Sharon Hamilton. Uh, who is a creator of another form of flower essences called light expression essences. And she and her husband have a farm outside of uh, Woodstock, Virginia, the other Woodstock, not the New York Woodstock. And okay. uh, she's been working with essences for 30 years and we became friends, a mentor, teacher. And I've been using her essences ever since for kind of like my daily uh, clearing, if you will. Uh, her essences are very, very high vibration. She no longer uh, works with the physical flowers and plants and so on, but works with the energies of them through the divas and nature spirits and so on in the angelic realm. Interesting. Quite an interesting okay. woman. Yeah. Um, so I progressed over time. And then in the meantime, I'm still doing my regular daytime work in Congress, lobbying, you know. That is so interesting. Office. I mean, did you... Share with your colleagues, uh, you know, some of the work that no. you were doing. No, were, no. You, you weren't talking to the guys like lean over like, hey, I have some uh, some essence Only oils. So would you like I to uh... kind of sniff out that they were interested? Oh, if not, yeah. No, you know, otherwise okay. that gets into a lot of controversy. All oh, you're weird, you're strange, you're woo woo, you're right. blah, blah, blah. So I kept yeah. that separate unless I felt that they were open to listening to me. So I was pretty careful about that. You know, Makes I was out there, yeah. you know, blabbing away about my spiritual adventures and so on, because knowing that, you know, I'm working with senators and congressmen and staff and White House and all that, you know, you don't want to let on right. that. Well, maybe you're a little weird. Remember back in the Reagan era, uh, Nancy Reagan worked with a, an astrologer. Well, that created all kind of havoc for her. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just, I saw that and I kept quiet. You well, know? you know, these days it, it is becoming more present, but oh, you know, sure. even even 20 years ago or 15 years ago, um, it, it, it was, it probably was fairly present, but it is certainly not something that people spoke of. No, right? no, not at all. So you had to be careful. But there were people I knew in Congress and elsewhere, you know, who were involved in spiritual work. In fact, that's how I met Ayanda was through a friend of mine who worked in Congress. That huh. was a colleague of mine. So, you know, you kind of sniff out the energies. Right. And you've got to be cautious and careful where you, you know, what you do and what you say. Otherwise, you know, you'll be out of there. You know, they're just. Right, you know, right. I remember if there was a. Like that, that dude's into crystals. Get rid of him. Yeah, well, or, or, or whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. There's a center named <laughs> Senator Claiborne Pell from Rhode Island. 
He okay. was the last of the old money, old patricians. Um, and he got involved in some of that kind of work and his senatorial colleagues, you know, so they really put him down. Hmm. And Pell was really interesting character. Um, but he let on a little bit, maybe too much about his extracurricular right. activities in the world of spirit. Right. So I really learned from him and from others, just, you know, be quiet, take care of, you know, and do your own work. And uh, you can kind of do both simultaneously. So I never really had a big issue with that. That was never a big problem. Um, and that, and then in 2012, I got an email from a friend of mine about a channel energy called Zar, D-Z-A-R, which in ancient Hebrew means health. You've heard of maybe Cryon uh, channeled by Lee Carroll or Abraham by Esther Hicks, all kind of the okay. internationally known channels. Um, right. Zar is another energy sort of like that. And I was just really attracted to that energy. And I just knew it's called knowing your inner knowing, your heart energy. You don't need proof that this is the path to go down or whatever. You just know this is appropriate for you. You don't need credentials. You don't need any teaching, any, any of that stuff. So I knew that I needed to contact them. They um, live outside of uh, Brisbane, Australia, and they live in the semi-tropics, which is I never heard of before in Australia. And but anyway, okay. so they have a 20-acre macadamia nut farm. I got to be friends with them. Uh, Zar is a little bit different than like Cryon or Abraham. It's more of a personal energy. Uh, somebody at one time asked Zara, well, what's your distinction between you, Cryon, and Abraham? And so Zara said, if we were a corporation, Abraham would be your finance department, the law of attraction. That was their kind of focus. Cryon is more interested in the more the tech, energetic technologies. Lee Carroll is a former engineer also. He's an audio engineer. And uh, you know, Lee's been channeling Cryon since 1989. And when, when Cryon first in, uh, entered him, he freaked out. I mean, here's a really left brain guy. And all of a sudden, gotcha. the voice is coming through. But his wife at the time, Jan Tober, was a crystal reader, tarot card reader. So do you actually feel that when someone or a, a, a energy um, taps in and takes over? Do you, do you consciously feel that? or I, It doesn't I'm... take over me. Now, it's different than okay. Cryon or Abraham. Okay. Or even with Czar, because all those, Gary is the channel for Czar, they, their consciousness steps aside, and then that energy kind of takes over the body. Okay. Not so, with, so that is different than channeling? What occurred to this no, person that you were saying no, that freaked them out? There's different ways of channeling. There's no one okay. way. Okay. So a channel could be the person like uh, Edgar Casey. You know, he's in a trance, a trance medium. Uh, Lee Carroll, you might say, is a trans medium, but he's he's present. I mean, physically present. He's not lying down and not like like Edgar Casey might have done or sat with a client. Um, the physical body is present, but the consciousness is now of that collective energy from source. OK, it's not the energy of the individual, Lee Carroll or Esther Hicks or uh, or Gary O'Brien, who channels uh, Czar. Um, for me, when I work, I am a channel also, but I'm fully present. I'm fully here. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not channeling an energy or entity, which is a big distinction to make. Okay. I'm okay. channeling the energy of the individual in the, what we call their Akashic records or Akashic field. That's a big difference. So you, it's not a cryon's a collective of energies. Abraham's a collective of energies. Zara's a collective of energies from source, compassion energies from source. I'm not doing that. Other okay. people will channel the energy called Jesus or Mary Madeline or Mother Mary or so on. Or they may channel energies from the Palladians or the Arcturians or Syrians and so on. I don't do that. Okay, okay. so this is a big distinction to make when you're channeling. There's different ways to channel, different forms of channeling. Are you fully present? Are you in a trance? Big difference. Gotcha. Okay, so that, that's kind of how I led up to this and how I got involved with what we call the Akashic Records was back in, oh, roughly 2009, 2010, I was living in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, the home of Thomas Jefferson the University of Virginia, and I was working there. And a friend of mine named Joanne uh, was a longtime member of the Edgar Casey Foundation and started bringing in speakers from Virginia Beach. 
And as you may know that they have a big publication, publishing, a publishing company. Um, and on the table that she had a lot of different of the Edgar Casey books was a book called Edgar Casey on the Akashic Records. Now, Edgar Casey over his lifetime did roughly 14,000 healings that were all transcribed by his secretary. 3,000 of those were done in the Akashic Records. Hmm. So he was a big time Akashic Record reader, but again, he was in a trance. And he went through a whole meditative process to access the records and then act as an interpreter of those energies that he was channeling through meditation for the client. So I'm walking by the table, I see the book, and I had no particular interest in the Akashic Records. I'd never had a reading before. Um, and I walk by the table, and the book literally energetically leaps up and smacks me in the head, and I got it, read it, read the book. You know, you okay, go to the book, right. it drops out in front of you or whatever. That happened to me. So I read, the, I bought the book, I read it that evening, and that's when I realized, again, a knowing that, oh, oh, I'm supposed to read the Akashic Records and work with the Akashic Records the rest of my life. It was a knowing. And so I then learned that I had been doing this many lifetimes, and I'm just the latest incarnation of that, you might say, soul energy. And I just started practicing and working with friends of mine and kind of like relearning how to access the records um, and work with a couple of different individuals who teach people how to access the records. Uh, but it turned out that I, I was doing, I had to learn how to do it my way, not their way. Uh, and okay. so what I do with the records is individual to me, and there is no one way or right way or wrong way to access the records. Um, so that's kind of like my history of getting involved in all this. So to access or to channel, do you just put yourself into like a, a almost a meditative state? Like what do you, what are some of the sensations you feel? What do you, how do you kind of prep for that process? I don't. <laughs> okay, that's where I'm okay. in that sense. Okay. A lot of other people go into a meditative state. They, they have their own process of working with meditations or chants or whatever to access whatever energies they're working with. For whatever reason, I don't. I don't need to do a prayer. And, and to access the records, there's a lot of different ways of doing that. You can do it through a shamanic journey, through meditation, through Reiki work, uh, so on, so on, and so forth. Okay. What I learned with me is that I can just connect with, you might say, the higher self of the individual I'm working with or the group that I'm involved with. And collectively, we access what we call the Akashic Records. So let me step back a minute and explain what, what my interpretation of the records are. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we're now talking about yes, the Akashic yes. Records, what, are, what is this thing that we label or we call the Akashic Records? Um, to me, it's a it's just the, the energy field of the universe, the quantum field of the universe. Some would call it the ethers, quantum field, dark matter, dark energy. There are a lot of different labels to this all pervasive energy throughout the universe. And all practitioners of any modality, we all access the same energy field. We just do it differently based on our own frequency. Energy reflects energy. So my energy is reflective of what we label as the Akash. Others, we call it Reiki or whatever, whatever they're dealing with. There is no like a location of the Akash. It's not like you go 500 light years, make a right-hand turn and there's Reiki. If you make a left-hand turn, there's Akash. No, okay. it's, it's just the field of energy. Um, so it's, it's, say, all the, it's all the same? Yeah, it, it, it's to me and from what I've seen and what I've learned, talking to a lot of other practitioners throughout my, my time doing this, we've all come to pretty much the same feeling that, you know, it, we all access this field of energy. Some would call it the realms of creation. Some, like I said, the ethers or whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. uh, Czar calls it the realms of creation and there's different aspects of that energy. Uh, one aspect being what we call the Akash or all that knowledge. So the Akashic records, you might say, is an energetic memory or record of all your thoughts, actions, behaviors, patterns, feelings, judgments, opinions, and so on, of every time you've incarnated. And that incarnation is not only on Earth, but elsewhere. You know, a lot of times, a lot of us have been elsewhere also throughout the universe. So we can tap into this field of energy that, that we now label as the Akashic Records to use for what we might call healing or clearing purposes. Your past, and let me see. Your 
who you are in the present is a reflection of who you've been all the lifetimes that you've incarnated, along with your astrology and so on. Um, they're all useful tools. Astrology is a useful tool. Um, and I happen to focus with the Akash. Okay. The term or the label Akashic Records was derived from a woman named Madame Blavatsky in the late 1800s. She was a Russian philosopher, scientist, <laughs> writer, and she wrote voluminously about the interaction between Eastern and Western religions and so on. All her work, she downloaded what she called or labeled as the Akashic Records. In Sanskrit, Akash means primary source, primary field, primary substance. So Akash or Akashic Records would be primary field of energy that we all tap into. Okay, that's just a, an old ancient term. And the ancients knew about this energy. Uh, they call the Tree of Knowledge, Tree of Life, Book of Knowledge, Book of Life. You can find references of that in the Bible, the Quran, the Kabbalah. Uh, you can find it in ancient hieroglyphics of the Mayans, of the Sumerians, of the Egyptians, and so on. So oh, that oh. energy has been known throughout recorded in human history. The only thing is that <clears throat> up until recently, it was only the purview of your psychics, your shamans, your oracles, priests and priestesses, who had a higher level of consciousness than the average human being were able to access what we call now the Akashic Records, okay, the oracles and so on. Nowadays, say after World War II, we've in enhanced our level of consciousness so anybody can access their records with proper teaching and training. Anybody can do it if they so desire. Uh, it just takes practice, just like anything. So else. why is it? Why, why was that kind of a benchmark after World War II? Um, the atomic bomb. Okay. The atomic bomb, according to Czar, signaled to the universe that, oh, human beings can destroy themselves. And that started bringing in these collectives of energies that we now label as the Czar and, 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 and so on, all these. So these energies came in, they're like, oh, we better do something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. we need okay. to help these people. They're going to self-destruct. They're an experiment throughout the universe. Not a good idea if they self-destruct. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, and so ato atomic bomb, bad. The, these energies, good. They came in and, and basically started yeah. educating us and, and helped to speed up the, the, right. the, the, the enlightenment find, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So that's why you find so many people channeling nowadays. Okay. Channeling Jesus and Mother Mary and Mary Madeline and the Palladians and the Sumerians and so on. Okay. Um, or the Akashic Records, or Reiki, or whatever. You find more and more people are tapping into these energies. Uh, as we learn, as we grow, and if you look at the kids being born nowadays, it's pretty amazing, their levels of consciousness that right. are coming out. It's not just like old times in the past, you had a genius like a Mozart or a Beethoven, but once in a blue moon, maybe once in a generation, once in 100 years. Nowadays, you're finding this happening with immense frequency that more and more of these babies coming in are, are coming in at a much higher level of consciousness than we've ever had in the past. Right. That's what gives you hope that we aren't going to self-destruct, right. that these kids are going to grow up and take over, and they're going to be a hell of a lot um, more aware than, than we've been. Yes. You know, uh, and that awareness is, is increasing. So the awareness of your heart energy, you see all these different trainings and workshops and modalities out there you know, like the, like the landmark education and so on, mm -hmm. you know, that are bringing forth a new level, a higher level of consciousness. And I, you know, I believe probably, uh, you know, through zoom and just our communication tech technological communication has allowed for more comfortable verbalization of these these practices, these un, maybe some would say unusual practices, but they're because they're being um, expressed on a more regular basis across the globe, they're starting to become a little bit more mainstream and more widely accepted on a much faster, in a much faster way. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. It is becoming more acceptable. Uh, you'll see it more and more in mainstream literature, journalism, things like that, you know, yes. which you know, the, the question then, well, look at what's happening around the world, you know, wars and in, in all over the place, you know, and all the shootings and killings and, you know, the destructive climate change. And, you know, like Australia has had horrible fires and now floods in eastern Australia. 
our you know our west is, is experiencing hyper drought uh <laughs> then you get the warfare you know in eastern europe and it goes on and on and on but that's the news that you see right news you know so fear sells yes you know and what i see underneath all that is enormous shifts and changes in humans the human spirit, heart, energy, consciousness, and so on. I mean, there's more and more people waking up that, oh, something's really missing here. You know, something's not right. And you'll find more and more people that are getting involved in these kind of activities. And more and more people getting, you know, involved in the workshops and growing and learning and and just recognizing that, hey, we've got to wake up. There's something not working here, something not, not happening that is in our best interest. So you'll, you'll, you're seeing an awakening happening. Like I mentioned with the kids coming in nowadays being birthed that are much higher level of consciousness than we've ever seen in the past. And, you know, it's, it's a really, to me, really satisfying and hopeful energy. And I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the news. I kind of follow it. I mean, I used to read four or five newspapers a day when I was working on the Hill. And now I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kind of look at the news. And what's happening with me is that it's, you know, that the Buddhists say that we live in a dream, okay? And what that means, if you look at it from a psychological point of view, you've heard the term subconscious energy versus conscious energy. Mm-hmm. And what science has found is that we only use about 5 to 10% of our creative uh, capacity, conscious capacity of energies. The rest of 90, 95% is what we call the subconscious energies. Those are patterns and beliefs and thoughts and judgments and opinions that we carry lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Right. You know, and so what we're doing and what myself with the Akashic Records and many others are doing are, I, mean, I call myself a collaborator, not a healer. I don't heal anything, but I collaborate with the individual and collaborate with them to help them identify subconscious patterns that are preventing them from being who they truly are. Now, there's an interesting story that's actually true um, that there was a monastery in Thailand. This was maybe 100 years ago or so or more that had this beautiful golden Buddha statue. Absolutely gorgeous. Made out of gold. However, they were under threat from the neighbors in what back then was Burma and uh, that these neighbors were in war and they thought that the they would come and, and pilfer the Buddha, kill the monks and so on. So what they did was that they plastered this golden Buddha in a really thick, like a foot thick of plaster, painted it. So it looked right. like a typical average Buddha wasn't, you know, this gold was no longer visible. So it, it survived. And roughly, I think it was in the 50s, they were going to move this Buddha, this plaster, what they thought was a plaster Buddha, but they had to use kind of a forklift. And when they lifted it, it started cracking. The plaster started cracking. And that's when one of the monks discovered that, oh, oh my God, you know, there's this golden Buddha on it. So they, they right. were able to chip away the plaster to reveal this golden Buddha. Well, I use that as a metaphor for, or for being human. All human beings are this golden Buddha. We all are, everybody, I don't care how evil they might be, you know, and so on, or however you want to label people, we're all the golden Buddha, but we have this thick layer of plaster over us. And so what I see for myself working with the Akash is to help you chip away that plaster. So more and more and more of that golden Buddha shows up. That right. to me is a critical point right there. What anybody and any uh, person who is a, um, you know, a practitioner in the healing arts or whatever, that the whole aim is to allow the individual to recognize and become more aware of who they truly are. That we have all these subconscious patterns, we're driven by our subconscious patterns. And these patterns, you know, a typical example would be you get married, uh, things don't work out, you get a divorce, but then you marry the same personality, but a different body. Right. Oops, what was I thinking? And I hear that all the time. <laughs> what was I thinking? Well, that's old, old patterns. You know, that we carry lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Or you're afraid of flying. Well, why are you afraid of flying? Well, that's past life stuff also. So we're governed, you know, and unknowingly or unaware that we're so governed by our past life judgments and opinions and thoughts and fears and behaviors and patterns, you know, that we're almost like, you know, the movie The Matrix, that we're the Matrix in a way. Gotcha. Um, and we really don't have a lot of free will. What we think of as free will is we would 
hope would be that 5%, but typically it's your subconscious patterns that, that show up and what we call free will. So it's to expand your ability to really access your free will, to access that golden Buddha deep within we call the true self, as opposed to your taught self, subconscious patterns, however, however you want to label that. And to me, anybody who's working as a practitioner, that's your really goal with an individual that you're working with, with yourself first. And any practitioner is working with themselves first, period. It's about that. So I know that, you know, when I'm working with somebody, this is really about me learning about me. And then it's about them, you know, whoever, whether it's individual or group or whatever the case might be. Um, and it's a fascinating process. Yeah. So I wanted to um, go back to you know, some of the work that you do. So I, I experienced experience what you do mm -hmm. um, a couple weekends ago at an open house. It was just a quick little snippet. And... You know, it was a 15 minute session. And I mean, I felt the energy is moving around in a very, very physical way mm -hmm. uh, for the full 15 minutes. Um, and then, of course, when we were done, I was grabbing on the countertop, grabbed onto the, the, the door, you know, the, the, the framing of the door and kind of hung out in the hallway. Um, meanwhile, kind of leaning up against the wall. I mean, I, I was I was kicked on my my butt. <laughs> it, was, it was really a potent session. And so um, I'll, let me back up a little bit more. So during that session, what I found was very interesting is the way you go about kind of um, passing this, the, the information along, I guess it's a type of sound therapy, you actually do it in a form of a language, light language, um, and interspersed in there is, is some English. So you have kind of a sense of what you're working through with a lot of unusual vowels and sounds kind of surrounding it. Right. Um, so it, it was a very um, unusual session. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in, in my opinion, so much of this inner work energy work is very unusual and it's still very strange to me, although I've been down this rabbit hole for now 10 years. And, but because, because none of this was part of my belief system and I'm still so heavily ingrained in, a lot of the stuff is not possible right. that even though I'm, I'm knee deep in all of it now, it, it's still unbelievable to me. So, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there face to face with you and you're, you're, you have all these strange sounds coming out of your mouth um, and some English messages that I understand. And meanwhile, experiencing this very physical, um, like internal motion, Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I had, I would not have been able to drive after that session if I wanted to, I was really uh, pretty, I was dazed and confused. <laughs> I mean, it was, um, and to me that indicates that something was really taking place. I mean, so, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that um, about two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks have gone by, maybe two and a half weeks or so. Um, and I am in a very, very good place right now that whatever occurred that weekend um, lifted just a bunch of weight. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so thank you for that no, you're very welcome. much. Um, but even if, even if this shift that didn't occur to me, the very fact that, the physical experience that I was, that was taking place um, without touch. Um, I mean, that's, it's just, it's eye-opening to me. It's, it's just so very, so very interesting and intriguing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally and completely fascinated by so many of these things. And when something hits me as profound as your work, um, I mean, it, it just makes me want to just dive e even deeper and, and explore even more because, you know, I, I know that even though I've been doing this for 10 years, I'm just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of part of what I'm doing. What I'm doing is because I do feel like I'm scratching the surface and there's, I, I want to present as much as I can to other people. And, um, and I, I think it's very cool that you are very much, you're very much left brain and right brained. And, you know, if I saw you on the street, I would not say, Hey, this, 
this dude's into oils or, you know, um, crystals right. or woo woo or, or any of that thing. And yet, uh, you know, uh, again, what you do is, is, is very potent. Um, but yeah, so I had actually had breakfast with my parents this morning. I was just telling them that I just feel good for like the last couple of weeks. I just, I truly feel amazing. Um, and once again, thank you. That's yeah. Um, so I don't wear a Dumbledore outfit. Yeah, no, yeah that's right. That's right. <laughs> Although I've threatened to do that sometime. Yeah, one, some point in time, I probably will. That, that is in a in a closed space, not one out in the open. Gotcha. But no, yeah. so um, so something that we haven't spoken of yet is the fact that you do, I guess, transmit or use light language as a tool when you mm-hmm. access the Akashic Records. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you, did it, when you tapped in, have you always... Has that always occurred? Like the, when you tapped into Akashic Records, did you then start speaking in this particular language or is that something that you developed or, you know, why is that the way it is? So that evolved over time. When I okay. first started working with the Akash, uh, it was mostly speaking in English uh, and there was what you might call um, uh, vocal tonations, vocal toning okay. that went on or some would call it humming. Um, and what we're doing really is, is what people really need to realize. It's not the words that I'm saying or what anybody else is saying. It's the frequency behind the words. What we're doing, we're having a frequency conversation. What you experience energetically was a frequency conversation that impacted okay. you, your DNA, every cell of your body, however you want to you know, talk about that. And one thing I do want to mention is that our DNA is mostly quantum energy. Um, back in the 90s, when the scientists, geneticists were doing the genome project, mapping out the entire gene structure of humans, they found that our DNA was only roughly 5 to 10 percent acting as a physical entity. In other words, sending chemical codes to our genes. The other 95, 90%, they had no idea. It felt like it was inert, not doing anything. The Russians, interestingly, asked much broader questions and did experiments with lasers and so on and other people around the world and discovered over time that, in fact, most of our DNA is quantum energy, that it acts (laughs) like a computer code, um, that this 95% of what what they call junk DNA, you know, great scientific term because they had no idea what it was for, um, was actually acting as a, as a very, very sophisticated quantum energy computer code. And that was, in essence, giving information to the hard part, hardware part of your DNA, your 5% or so, that was communicating with your genes. Um, and then they began to realize that, oh, this is, there is no junk DNA. It's really, it's all complete, but most of it is at an energy level that they really don't have uh, tools or techniques to really observe. Cryon talks about that quite a bit in, in, their, in their channelings with Lee Carroll. And there's fact, their book 12, I believe it is, is called The Esoteric Nature of DNA, which really explains the nature of DNA quite significantly. So when we're working, we're working with frequency, that frequency can impact your DNA because again, it's mostly quantum energy. Um, so when I'm working with you, uh, again, it's a frequency conversation, it's toning, it's a vibrational tones, and it's speaking English, which itself has its own frequency, the words that I'm saying. Okay. Over time, uh, in fact, this happened when I was working with Czar back in May of 2019. We did some channeling work and some clearing work, and I began to experience working with the earth energy, and Czar calls that the Teo Mekula energy. It's an energy of the earth. So we live within the frequency of the energy of the earth. We don't live on the earth. We live within the earth, within the earth frequency. So we're a part of the earth as long as being a part of the universe. Um, So we tap into um, the earth energy. We tap into the universal energy and so on. So what I'm doing with light language that evolved over since May of 2019 Light language is a language of love. It's not understandable on purpose. Some might call it speaking in tongue. You've heard of that in different religions. Very similar. It's a frequency. It's not understandable on purpose. Language can get in our way. 
Mm -hmm. understanding is that karma has like 125 different definitions. What definition of karma are you using? We talk about God creating all these different interpretations uh, in, in language. And then you also have misinterpretations from one language to another language. So language gets in our way. Thinking gets in our way. So the work that we're doing with frequency bypasses your thinking, your mind, whatever you want to call that. And we're getting down into the heart of you, the heart of who you are, your quantum DNA. And that is being impacted by the frequencies that we're all working with, whether it's Reiki or quantum touch or access consciousness or whatever modality you're working with. We're all dealing with frequency and we're also speaking. So our mind, our cells kind of have a sense of, oh, okay, we're working with the throat chakra, we're working with the heart chakra. And I tend to work with the chakras because we tend to understand you have a sense of what that means. Right. So if we're working with the throat, you have, you, you might have had a, you might have a fear of speaking in public. You know, that's an ancient fear from way back when, when you tried to express your truth and what would what happen? You were burnt at the stake, you were stoned, you know, whatever the case might be, out of fear. Out of so to, to, to interject on that really quick. So we did go, we did a little work on the throat chakra for me. Yeah. And, <laughs> And so, you know, our, our session was on Saturday. My first interview for, you know, what it is I'm doing here um, was on Tuesday. And for the first time in, you know, I've been doing this for about two, two and a half years. For the first time in two, two and a half years, I was not nervous in front of the camera. Good. And, and, and every session after that, I just have not been nervous in mm -hmm. front of the camera. Mm -hmm. which allows me to actually speak my voice. Absolutely. And I, you know, it's, it's been so freeing. So anyway, so what you said is accurate. And I experienced yeah. that one, one of a couple of things I experienced. So anyway, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> so, so what we're doing, you know, when I work with you, I, I, I'm a collaborator with you, as I mentioned a while back that I collaborate with you, your essence, your higher self. And we together access your Akashic field. I become an interpreter and I become what we call a channel. But I said, I'm fully present, I'm fully here. So as we're working, you know, I'm speaking English. So you have a sense of what's going on. And then at the same time, I'm, I'm expressing myself and these energies through what we call the light language, speaking in tongue, and also a, a vibrational frequency, so like toning or humming. So how I evolved is to use different tools and techniques to express your Akashic field to you in a manner that's having an impact on your, on your physicality, your emotional body, your mental body, your etheric body, your spiritual body, all these energy bodies that comprise you. And it's all being done through frequency, but it's just different ways of, you might say, attacking the issue of the subconscious patterns that we identify together as a collaborator. I really want to emphasize that we're collaborating on this. This is not me doing something to you. That connotates duality. There's, then that connotates a separation. You know, like, I like, I've got a pill for you. Okay, well, that's, a, you know, I'm doing something to you as opposed to in collaboration gotcha. together. So what we're doing is, is a collaborative process. There is no separation between you and me. In the field of quantum energy, there is no separation. So I connect with you, you connect with me. We're always connected with all, with all and everybody. We just are not at a place where we generally recognize that. You know, we live in separation right now. Tribalism, nationalism, all these isms. You know, I'm separate from you. I'm better than you. You know, I'm stronger. I'm not as strong. You know, we have all these judgments and opinions. Those are all part of our taught self, our thinking self, our subconscious pattern. So what you see around the world is a massive, collective conscious unconsciousness of subconscious patterns interacting with each other. And a lot of times they can be pretty destructive, whether they're individual relationships or working with yourself or communities or countries or whatever. We're just a mass of this subconscious patterns that are interacting all the time. And all that we're doing is to assist individuals and groups to recognize these patterns and then to help you clear them. So what I'm doing is to assist you in moving those patterns, those energy of those patterns into your loving light, your heart energy. So that is the clearing energy. It's not me clearing it, it's you clearing it. 
I'm, I'm <laughs> acting as a conduit or whatever you want to call it, channel interview or whatever, to assist you to collaborate with you. And I want to really make sure that people understand that. That, that to me is a moving into the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, whatever people want to say, out of duality, out of separation. That means that we are connected. We're all one. Okay, so that's, that's how I'm one. operating. You know, and we are that heart energy. We are love, compassion, joy, passion, appreciation, kindness, grace, gratitude, generosity. That's who we truly are. We're, and I keep saying this over and over and over again. We're not our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors, our patterns, our judgments, our opinions. You know, we typically will form our sense of self based on the judgments and opinions and, you know, and all that, as opposed to recognizing that we are love and joy and compassion and so on. Okay. Okay. Um, and that is a real, a real big distinction to make because we typically want to believe that, you know, we're the, the thinking self, the taught self, that's who we are. We have revenge or betrayal. Um, there is a Dr. Bruce Lipton, a PhD mm -hmm. cell biologist who wrote a seminal book called Biology, Biology of belief. belief. Great book. Right. Yep. In chapter seven, he talks about the subconscious patterns. And he's one of the first in the mainstream of science to talk about that. And what he says is that between the third trimester of pregnancy and seven years of age, the fetus, the baby, the child is a sponge for its environment. It's just taking in everything. It's taking in the mother, you know, is the mother happy, not happy? What kind of nutrition is she taking? You know, then one thing to remember too, we're almost 60, 70% of water. And what we found is that the water is an extraordinary um, uh, presence or whatever you want to call that. A guy named Dr. Emoto from Japan did long, many long-term studies of the impact of emotions and feelings and so on right. and the environment on water. And found that if we, uh, if he looks at the ice crystals of polluted water, they're horrible looking, they're deformed, demented, whatever. The ice crystals of water that comes from a pure lake or pure river, or if you speak love, joy, happiness into it, beautiful, beautiful crystals. So you can imagine that all the lifetimes that we've existed and we started getting on ourselves, blaming ourselves. I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, goes on and on and on. That impacts us because that's impacting our water. That's yeah, that was in the movie, um, the what the bleep do you know, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was fantastic. Right. There was like different glasses with different words. Like one glass would say hate, one glass would say love, one glass right. would say something good, one glass would say something bad. And when looked under the microscope, depending on which gla glass it happened to be in, it would have a corresponding you know, jagged, awful shape or a beautiful, you know, crystal-esque, fantastic shape. Right. Um, so that was a neat study. Again, yeah. So again, be careful how you speak. Right. You know, are you speaking hate, anger, rage, violence, betrayal, get even, not good enough? Or are you speaking love, joy, self-love? One of the biggest issues that I find, if not the biggest issue that I found over the more than decade I've been working and working with thousands of people is self-love. Most people don't love themselves, you know, and they live in their judgments and their opinions of themselves and not self-love, you know, and that is the biggest issue that I find that I'm, that I work with, with individuals and myself, you know, day to day is self-love. Right. You know, that we generally just don't love ourselves. We'll blame. We'll get into a relationship after the beautiful aha, you know, when I'm in love with this person. And then all of a sudden reality hits and, oh, that that warts. You know, they're a toad. They're not the, the Prince Charming or Princess Charming or whatever. You know, and then we get into conflicts and our trigger points and we start interacting with each other and boom, things blow up. You know, and so... All we're doing is to help an individual really become aware of their true self. Again, I go back to that and the self-love that we are. The universe is love and compassion. And that's why these energies come in to really to assist us to be our loving, conscious, beautiful selves. Um, Zar says that over and over and over again. I see you when Zar is speaking through Gary. He says, I see you as who you truly are. I don't see you and your taught self all your judgments and opinions and all that kind of stuff. And when they work with you, they're working with you to, again, to become more and more aware of who the beauty that you are. And that's, that's all I do.
when it comes down to it, I'm working with your subconscious patterns to help you identify those patterns, to help you move those energies into your loving light. So you become the more of a true self, loving self that you are. Well, I'd love to give, um, depending on, on your time, I'd love to give um, the, the people a little sample of what it is you do and, and, and the way it sounds, you know, it, um, maybe demonstrate some of the, the light language through this, uh, you know, a short, maybe a five minute clearing. Sure. Would that be okay? Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay. So <sighs> you hit the hey, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear one. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, the beauty of you, the beauty of you, the beauty of you all, dear ones. Mm -hmm. Such beauty, 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 you truly are. Mm -hmm. Time to step into your, your beauty, your power, your strength, dear ones. And for there is much victim, victim, victim energy abound. Mm -hmm. Victim, 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 victim. I am not this, I am not that. You are stronger than me. I am weaker than you. Mm -hmm. Over and 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 over again through many, many lifetimes. Giving your power away to another. They have your answers. They have my answers. I am not I am not smart enough, aware enough to know my path, my joy, what I'm here for this planet. Why am I here on this earth? With all this confusion and chaos and seemingly chaos. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Dear ones, you know the truth. You know the answers within you. Mm -hmm. Time to empower yourselves to seek within. Mm -hmm. To empower yourselves to seek within, dear ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to power yourselves, to release the victim, 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 victim energy. Deep within your heart, deep within your light, your love, dear ones. To expand the playing field, the awareness field, if you will, that you have never experienced before. Time to release, time to release, time to release, dear ones. Those energies that are not serving you, not who you truly are, not serving you, not who you truly are, not serving you, not who you truly are. <laughs> breathing, 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 breathing so deeply within, dear ones, so deeply within. Time to breathe, time to breathe, time to breathe. <laughs> Well, yeah, hey, 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 yeah, I said that the breathing, 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 breathing. In whatever manner works for you through your nose, through your mouth, it matters not. Huh? To allow that beautiful breath of life to flow through every cell of your body, your cellular memories. Mm -hmm. To allow Mother Earth, Mother Nature guide to support you on your journey, on your path, on your way. Huh? To allow, dear one, to allow. <laughs> To open your heart to the earth, to the universal energies of love and compassion from all that is, dear one. For you live within the earth's energy, not just upon her, but within her energy, dear one. You are part of the earth. You are part of the universe. There is no separation. You are the expression of all that is in human form, whether you are female or male or however you identify your gender. It matters not, dear ones. It matters not how for throughout your many, many lifetimes, you have been the expression of all genders. <laughs> breathing, 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 breathing so deeply within, so deeply within, so deeply within your ones. Time to breathe, time to breathe, time to breathe so deeply within. <laughs> Hmm. 
Breathing, 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 breathing. Time to open your breath, dear one. To allow that beautiful breath of life to flow, to flow, to flow through your chest, your heart, your lungs, into your bloodstream, through every cell of your body, your cellular memories, your cellular membranes, your protoplasm, your nuclei, your chromosomes, your genetic expression, your DNA. Time to allow to breathe, 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 breathe. Mm. For there have been so many constrictions in the breath of life, dear one, so many constrictions, and so many anxieties and fears where you have held your breath through many, many lifetimes, including this one. Mm. Time to open your breath, time to open your breath, time to open your breath, dear ones. Mm. Breathing, 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 breathing. We cannot emphasize enough to, to allow that beautiful breath of life to flow, 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 flow. In whatever manner you choose, your choice, dear ones. Time to choose for yourself. Time to open your third eyes, your dear ones. Your pineal gland, what humans call the pineal gland. To open your insight into yourself, your intuitive self, the knowing of who you truly are. Time to allow your knowing, dear ones, your knowings to expand. Not just your thinking, your taught self, your brain, your mind, dear one, but your heart energy. For there are so many constrictions deep within your heart. Your heart, your heart, your heart, dear ones. So many energetic constrictions deep within your heart chakra. The fear, the trauma, the pain, the sorrow, the sadness through all the lifetimes you have lived, including this one. Of separation, of, of abandonment, of pain, sorrow, sadness, dear ones. Again, breathing, 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 dear ones. Such beautiful souls you truly are. So many beautiful beings of light are supporting you, loving you on your journey, on your path, on your way. Time to open your heart to yourself, to love, 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 love you, dear one, to love yourself so fully, so always, so completely. So beautiful souls you are. Time to step into your awesomeness, your magnificence, dear one. And we thank you, we bless you on your journey, on your path, on your way, and we are complete. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So is there anything else that you wanted to um, share with us before we start to wrap this up? Oh, I just want to thank you know, all the energies that, that have come to work with the earth, with us humans, and to, to thank every human being uh, that are becoming more and more aware, you know, and, and to take whatever steps you feel necessary to work with whomever works for you. It's, there's no one uh, energy or being or whatever uh, that is the answer. You know, there's many, many, many thousands and millions of answers out there. Uh, just, you know, again, uh, discernment, trust, trust your heart, open your heart. Um, but really, it's, it's a message of love. You know, it's, it's really time that we love ourselves. And however you go about doing that uh, to open yourself, um, whatever works for you. And I just bless you and honor you and thank you. And thank you, Lauren. I appreciate your time and effort and what you're doing to spread the word. Uh, we need more of that. And thank you, everybody, who will be listening uh, to this. And bless you and honor you. And uh, take care. <laughs>